Uh, we came back from Nepal in 2008. I chose to be a stay-at-home mom and support the family instead of like going back into the classroom and teaching primary school. The homeschool movement has been really growing rapidly and taking off for various reasons. And I just, I felt like I wanted to help parents who, who, who want to start homeschooling and who are struggling with confidence. God led me, Sherry and I, to meet each other. She was planning a Sight Words success challenge in last November. And from there, we saw that we both had like a passion um, for um, teaching reading and for partnering with parents. And so, yes, we have partnered together. And now since then, we have done a, a several challenges and we have worked this last year one-on-one -on -one with parents and with kids to grow confidence, uh, give direction. And now uh, we have this stellar program for supporting homeschool parents. So we're gonna briefly talk about that. And it's just to take off the pressure, you know, the overwhelm and the worry, you know, instead of like you wondering if what you are doing is the right thing, if it's enough, you know, um, does it make sense? Are you teaching things in the right order? You can actually just take that burden, that load, and put it in our hands to carry. We will carry that for you. All you have to do is follow along. We will lead you in the steps, the right steps that um, you need to take. And so Sherry will talk a little bit more about that now. It's been wonderful being able to work with Rosemary and um, and and this journey has just been incredible for both of us. So I just wanted to tell you just a tad bit about kind of my background and kind of how we came about being where we're at in terms of like our programs and, and things like that. So um, I was a classroom teacher, as I said before, and I've been I've been a reading specialist. I was a Title I director um, in a small school district in Colorado. Um, I've had, and then I've also been a reading interventionist. Um, I had, I was in charge of um, our paraprofessionals when I was the reading specialist in Colorado. So I've, I had already taught like um, tutors how to teach reading or people how to teach reading, but, um, but Working at Vanderbilt as the instructional coordinator at the Vanderbilt Reading Clinic really um, kind of changed things for me. So my job at the Vanderbilt Reading Clinic was to just kind of um, come in and take everybody, take these tutors, and um, they were people who had no, very little, most of them had little um, reading background. They had experience in other areas like speech and language or in um, like uh, other um, like special education and things like that, but they had no background for reading. So my job was to come in and take them and in one semester teach them everything that they should know about tutoring their child tutoring a child in the, in the uh, community that was a struggling reader. So our kids were already starting behind. And so it was this kind of uh, challenging situation because like on the one hand, you want people who can like take these kids and run with them because they're already behind. And on the other hand, you have, um, you have these tutors that you want to, that you need to train because they're going to deal with reading once they get into their teaching field. Um, even if they're speech and language, they're still going to have to deal with reading. And even when they're in special education, they're still going to have to do with deal with re reading. So we had to like figure out how to teach them in the most streamlined, efficient way that was still um, evidence-based because of course, anybody who knows the Vanderbilt, they've got to have everything top research, um, you know, it's got to be the best program out there and um, and and still have something that we could train them in like three days. Like we only had three sessions, three training sessions, and then they had to be good to go and then and then come back in and support them, come in, come out, you know, observe, support, model, all of that stuff. And 
Um, and so that's what, that was what my job was. And so I looked at like 11 different curriculums that are the top research-based curriculums um, used today. And I uh, looked at like, what are the best things about them and how do we make them more powerful? So like um, adding the multi, some programs had a stronger multi-age component, I mean, uh, sorry, multi-sensory component. So it was more hands-on methods and then others um, were uh, were better in other ways so we took the best components of each of the programs put them together and kind of developed a, a skeleton program depending on the needs of the child so we would take a child assess exactly where they're at with every in every area of reading and then, um, and then look at it and go, okay, this child needs this, this, and this to be specifically targeted. And, um, and so this is how we're gonna do it. And then we would choose the program, at, try, try it for a couple sessions. If it worked, then great. If it didn't, then we'd tweak it, try another program, and we'd just keep going like that. So everything that we did was child-centered based on the, um, the exact, on exactly where that child was in that at that time and so that's kind of the background for what we're bringing into this what i realized i realized a few things throughout my career um one is as a teacher i could go to workshop after workshop after workshop and i would walk away from these workshops and be like oh yes that's so great i got all this valuable information and then I'd go to apply it in the classroom and I didn't have a clue. Like there were, I, I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't know how to follow the directions, how to apply it. And I certainly didn't know how to do it with my students who, who I had multi-age students. I had second and third graders ranging from kids who didn't know their letters to kids who, who were reading at an eighth grade level, all 31 kids smacked together in the same classroom. And so, anyway what i i just would would get so frustrated but we had this amazing reading specialist who would come in and she would say let me just model a poetry unit for you and so she would come in and model it and i would watch her and i'd be like wow now i can do that i i can handle that and then she would model like teaching memoirs or teaching the writing process and all of that and and i really that's when I learned how to really learned how to, first of all, um, feel more comfortable teaching reading, but secondly, to be a reader detective. And so like um, zero in on their slightest behaviors and go, okay, what do we see in this child right now? And where do we, where are they at right now? And what, where are we going? And I would say that, um, that's one of the thing. My, one of my strengths is to be able to look beyond just the surface stuff to what's underneath. Um, so anyway, um, that's kind of a little bit about kind of my background. Rosemary, did you want to continue? Um, sure. Well, you know, I I thought about this awesome illustration that sort of. I guess reflects what we want to do um, in our program with the parents. So they're like, we've all been out, you know, in parks and gone for walks on trails and so forth. Well, some parks have, have maps to show you where the trails are and how long they have a park map, right? Um, it shows you where you are on the map and you can see where you want to go. There are, there are some parks that you, where you can also hire a guide to walk with the group, point out the trees and the flowers, uh, interesting facts about the area, the, like the geographical and historical facts about the area. And this makes the walk and the, the hike, the trail more interesting, more enjoyable. Uh, if you paid for a guide, most likely you're in a group with other people. So it actually takes your mind off the hot sun, the tired feet, your children, when they're in a group with other kids, they don't even notice how long they're walking. They just keep going because they're, they're not even thinking about it, right? And at the end, you come away having learned so much more 
maybe even gone like a, a further distance than you ever thought or that you've ever gone before. So in the same way, I want you to think of us as that guide, you know, the coach, the mentor, someone to give you the direction to make the trip more enjoyable, remove any stress related to wondering if you're doing a good job or not, you know, if you're if you should be teaching something now as opposed to later, um, dealing with like frustrations that your that your child is expressing in your curriculum, your reading curriculum that you're using now. So also like when you're out hiking as a family, and let's say you know where to go, you have a map, you have that map with you, whether it's uh, an app on your phone or uh, a paper map. Well, you know what? You're not worried about leaving your family and getting lost. You're not, wor you're not worried about leading them down the wrong rabbit trail. Um, and we probably have all taken walks and hikes without a map and, um, you know, spent extra hours because you went on the wrong trail that you thought that uh, when you thought you were on a different trail, you know, things like this. Well, when you have a map, right, you know which trails are the easiest and the shortest to get to take to get to the lake or the top of the mountain or the river or wherever, like a, a, a special campground that's out in in um, the mountains somewhere like we have those here in Canada. Anyway, you know how many snacks, uh, how much water each of you should take for your trek. And when the kids get grumpy and tired and whiny and want to know how much further, well, you can tell them confidently, right? You can lead them confidently. You won't be worrying yeah, about, you know, if you're on the wrong trail. You can, instead of focusing on worrying and, and anxiety and having that at the back of your mind, you can make it fun for your kids. And so that's what we want to offer 